videos, they're all worthy um, of consideration for the show. Oh, good. Are they musical or dancing or what? So far, all singers. All singers. Okay. Because I kind of wanted to see who, um, what we had, and, and I might get a couple of people that are, you know, good at dancing to judge, you know, if there was dancing or if I wanted more musical people. So, okay. Well, that's good. Do we yeah, need we'll to do... Do we need to do more? Um, I mean, how are people going to find out about it if they yeah. don't go to the website? So we've put it on social media. We're going to oh, put okay. it. In, we're going to put it in the newsletter that goes out in July. Then we're going to have oh, a dedicated good. Summerfest newsletter that we send out. So they'll get a, they'll get it that way. Oh, and okay. then I think we should also send it out to past applicants and, and participants. To see if there's anybody that would like to do it again. Okay. Um, and then we, you know, really the idea is to get as many applicants as you can and then be able to choose the best from the best, you know? Sure. That is, yeah, thank you for doing that. That is great. So when is all that stuff going to go out? So our, uh, our newsletter goes out the 1st of July. So that'll be Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, the July 1st. So that'll okay. go out. And we'll probably do the Summerfest one, uh, I don't know, maybe mid-July or as we get closer to August. And then I can email the past contestants anytime. Okay. Perfect. So does anyone have any people that they know of that would like to judge? That would be a good judge. I like to judge. This is Debbie. Oh, I like to judge. Oh, oh, you're you're a definite. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes. Does anyone else know somebody that's knows music really well or would be a real fun judge? I mean, I have some ideas. Just. The more the better. Um, I think Dave McCann might be a fun judge. Dave McCann? Uh-huh. He's a KSL. He's pretty open to helping us, right, Stephen? Uh yeah, he's helped us a couple times for to MC some events. Yeah. Oh, okay. So all right. I wouldn't know how to get a hold of him, but I could work on that. No. But this is, um, this is Charlene. Linda Van Orman used to be on the Arts Council, but she attends a lot of the music events and she might be a really great judge. Okay. I will. I'll write her name down. There probably are some others, Char, maybe from the Arts Council that would, would maybe consider it. Okay. We had talked about Adam being the MC, yep. too. Would. I, any preferences on Dave or Adam or someone else? If not, I'll go with those two. I was just thinking maybe one or or could be the judge and one or or could be the MC. So you could do that. Okay. Well, if anyone, I mean, thinks of anybody, feel free to get a hold of me and let me know. Do they have to live in Orem, the judges? No. Okay. We usually, if, uh, we did talk last time about potentially having a, like a representative from Miss Orem, like one of the Miss, you know, maybe right. maybe Miss Orem herself or or one other, but not not the whole panel being that right. way. Right. Yes, that was that was totally agreed on. So, okay, so one Miss Orem person, and we were going to have how many judges? Six or eight? I think six. I think I four. Um, six is good, but you can also do an odd number if you're worried about a tie. Well, that's a good idea. Well, should we go with five or seven? Either one. <laughs> okay. I think seven sounds good. Okay. 
go with the seven. All right. Hey, um, this is Kathy, John's wife. Oh, hi. Hi. Sorry. I'm in curler. <laughs> it's a crazy life right now. Um, but uh, what about um, you said you said there were several vocalists and uh, Patty Miner. I'm I'm sure many of you know her. She's a, a singing art, singing artist and been in some different uh, productions and so on. She would probably be a great judge for a vocalist or she could MC a, a program. She was Miss Utah and Miss Utah. Uh oh, lost ya. Yeah, I don't know if she lost connection, yeah. but yeah, it sounds like maybe Patty Minor. Oh, here she comes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we had a call come through. Yeah, Patty Minor. I mean, she. I did some events with her when I was had the title after her and she can do a whole show herself um so she's very comfortable you know of course on the stage she brings her music or she's a great judge of of especially music but she's judged a lot of pageants and and coaches and that's kind of her second career is 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 talent scouting mm -hmm. and that type of thing so okay anyway um and i can get a hold of her if, if you need somebody else let me know I, okay. I keep in touch with her once in a while. So, all right. Yeah, I've got I, Dave Mc, McCann's cell number too. I don't have it here with me. It's on my phone, but who I mean, should do I you send think that he to? He would really want to do it. Um, he might. He lives in Provo. Oh, okay. Um, and I think the fact, I think, like Steve said, they or whoever, maybe it was Kenna, but they like exposure uh, for the station. Okay. So. Who am I talking with? I'm sorry. Shelly. You're with Shelly oh. right now. Oh, is this Shelly? Yes. I know Who Shelly. am I talking to right now? This is John. Whitaker. Whitaker. Oh, hi, John. Hi. And Kathy. Okay, Shelly, what's your number? I am 801-380-9816. 9186? Uh-huh. 9816. Oh. 9816. Okay. I'll get his number and I'll, I'll send you it. Then you can call him if you want. Okay. I also had a couple of ideas for judges. So I think I think we're not, you know, I think we're doing pretty good. Does yeah, Charlene, just... Is Charlene still there or did she leave? I'm back. Sorry. I oh, you're back. Answer okay. a staff do I, call. Do, do I need to get with you on anything about working with you at the library on that no we we should be good to go i can i can send you more details the only challenge i was just going to remind people of is if we have a band that needs to be miked on multiple instruments we would only really be able to do that as the first act um, because there's just too much uh setup to do it multiple times so even if we want to have one band, we would still need to just consider how that would play into the rehearsal time or any run throughs that we would allow people to do as well. Okay. Like, can you, like, would you put all the ones that might need it together? Is that kind of what you're thinking or? No, um, generally. Orm's Got Talent, people bring the tracks of music on like an iPhone or something like that. Right. But if it's a live band, they they would ask to be mic'd per instrument, per singer kind of thing. And, and our sound person can do that, but it would be really time consuming to clear that band and then mic up another band. So oh, okay. the only real time you could do it is right at the beginning and then you would still need to factor in what is happening on the stage while that band cleared. Most of them are pretty nimble. They move through pretty quickly because they're just doing recorded the, music or something down. less yeah. intensive. Well, I don't remember how many how many bands were were there last year. Have there been any? 
there was uh, one what I would consider a band. It was a family of violin players, and there was a, and a piano and a singer, and it took a lot to get okay. them all set up. And they were the first act for that very reason, but that that was the only one. Okay, well we'll just yeah have to wait and see who we get and go from there, I guess. And we were going to have twenty acts. Twenty acts was that kind of what we'd come up with? Yeah, that was the number. Okay, and then, and then, who, who, who chooses who um, gets picked? Is it me and someone else, or who all helps me? Yeah, last year we did a little committee. We had, there was uh, three or four of us that picked them. Okay. But, uh, that's completely up to you. That's that we'll respect your decision. Well, I will respect a committee. I'll take anyone. <laughs> so if somebody wants to help me do that, let me know. Yeah, I can do that with you. This is Debbie. I'm happy to help you. Okay. Perfect. Well, and anyone else, if you want to. <laughs> Maybe when, when we get the submissions and we're ready, we can probably reach out and see who's available at, a, at whatever time that is. Okay. Perfect. Okay, am I, I missing something? Us, oh, the prizes. Okay. Who, who was going to get the prizes? Was that you, Steve, or, or Pete? Or... Um, Kelly, I got them last year. I can get them again if you want me to. Okay, who's that speaking? This is Kenna. Oh, okay. Sure. This is just going extremely smoothly, I think. So far. It is. <laughs> the new norm. So, is there anything else that I need to be working on or... I think if we just make a note in our advertising for Orem's Got Talent that people would need to bring their own chairs unless we're doing the tent and chairs thing. Yeah, which we're not doing tent and chairs, so we'll, we'll communicate that for kind of all of our events. Okay. We have chairs and tables for the, the judges, but we won't have enough chairs for audience. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now where, okay, so where, where is this at? Is This is outside, right? Is this over at the? It's at the stage at City Center Park, which is oh, okay. the it's... All Abilities Playground and the Senior Center. Okay. It's over there. Perfect. All right. Anything else? Okay, it sounds like it's not. Thank you so much, Shelly. Sure. Okay, um, let's move on to the hot dog and pie eating contest. We got both of those are both of those are committed and ready to go, so we'll be fine there. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Um, Orange Spirit Award. I don't know who's over at Orange Spirit Awards. Oh. Kirsten, is, is that you this year? Sorry. Yes, that's me this year. <laughs> Sorry. So I think that um, Pete had said last time that we would look at the individuals this time. Is that correct? Am I to have that right from my notes? Yeah, we had, you know, we had sent out all the applications or the submissions, and then uh -huh. we had just heard back from a few people as far as who they wanted to receive the awards. And so it's, I think basically we just need to make a, a final decision then. 
And did we just have the, I think there were, was it four submissions? Let me, let me pull that up real quick. Thanks, Pete. Is there a way for me to access that if I'm not on Facebook? Uh, the, the submissions? Uh-huh, yes. Uh, yeah, I can send it to you. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, um, so as if you remember, there was about a dozen nominations for this Brittany Pasquale. She had a, a bunch of different people kind of have a little writing campaign for her. Um, then we had Kathy Campbell, Kyle Clegg, Jordan Lee, Scott Wells, and Virginia Ball. And Kyle Clegg was another one that had several people um submit is that right i think i think you're right and let me i think when we, originally when we had um sent it out a couple people called uh said that kyle clegg and Brittany were their choices right but i don't know if how you want to go about that now i mean i can share my screen here that'd be great Hey, Steve. Yeah. This is John. Um, Kat and I get uh, to go, but um, everything's good with our show. Amy, he just tried to call me. I talked to JC. Everything's great. Uh, okay. You're going to get um, in touch, I believe, tomorrow. So JC's ex extremely excited. He wants to, you know, get going. So anyway, we got Sorry, we got to go. We've got a dance recital we've got to go to. John, when you talk to JC, will you just tell him that we're – I texted him too. We're trying to set up a call with you, him, and Rev Road so we can coordinate vehicles so that they're trying to get the right types of vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, Amy Amy and I, she just barely called me, as a matter of fact. Oh, perfect. five minutes ago. So we're, we've been playing phone tag, but uh, when I'm done here, I'm going to call her, and then uh, I'll uh, get with JC and we'll talk. So okay. everything's good. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John and Kathy. Okay, Shelly, I'll send you Dave McCann's number. Thanks, okay, John great. Number. Thanks. Okay, you bet. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. So, getting uh, back on the spirit of Orem, this, uh, we also had a lot of nominations for Ann Hartshorn. So, I'm trying to. So this here's where we, so we had 29 this is where we're at right here this uh 29 and above so we have 29 submissions wow and you know the basically actual um individuals right yeah as far as actual individuals it's not not nearly as many because Brittany has about 12 here so do we? Do you feel like? Do I need to? Do we need to send this back out so that everybody has a chance to read through them, and then cast their vote? Because I I can put it together in a form where you can read through each person's little profile, and then you can just cast your vote for the two that you think are the best, and or the most deserving. I think that that would really be a great way to handle it. Is that okay? I'd like to be able to read through them. Pete, can you send it out in a way where we could like actually vote and like pick two? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So and I'll so, uh, I'll work on that. Thank you. And then we'll all vote on them correct, and and then as soon as everybody's voted, then I can go ahead and contact them. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anything else, Kirsten? Um, not for, not for spirit awards. No. Okay. Um, so I know that we didn't have anything for Tuesday. Steven, can you share your screen again or tell me what's on Wednesday? Yep. That's the car show. Okay. John um, just gave a report on that. So, yeah, that, but that's, so the car on the car show, he's doing kind of coordinating all the JC Hackett, bringing the cars. The one other thing we need to, we need a decision from the committee on tonight is, the barbecue part, 
So here's how it's kind of set up right now is Apple Spice Junction is providing the chips for free. Um, Kenna, who is providing the cookies? I think it's neighbor. Well, we're, we're looking at a neighbor is considering it. The okay, so, neighbor. Perfect. So potentially a cookie don donation. And then the, then the meal is going to be the hot dogs. Now, Apple Spice Junction said that for $2 a person, they'd be willing to provide the chips, condiments, and hot dogs for the people. Um, so we And they would bring it out. They'd cook it themselves. They would take care of all of it. If we served a thousand people, it would it would cost us two thousand. If we if we did the hot dogs ourselves, then we would be probably um, to feed a thousand people. And when I say how low this number is, it just makes me question every time I eat a hot dog. But it's two hundred and fifty dollars to feed a thousand people um, <laughs> a hot dog. And okay, so, this is a little silly, but I actually really loved. Um, the idea of the like city council and stuff who were there volunteering to like cook it. And I feel like that's a really great way to connect with people. So cost aside, I, I still think it's more fun for us to do it. Perfect. So this is Kenna with apple spice. My, my biggest concern about this whole thing is the coronavirus and the COVID and who knows where we'll be at that point. Apple Spice is willing to bring out their staff that are food handler certified. I'm um, happen willing to do two locations. Everything would be safe and secure. That would be that is one of the reasons we, I feel like we should go with them. But that's my opinion. I have to say that I agree with Kenna. Normally, I would want us to do it and have that camaraderie, but because of COVID, I agree with Kenna that we should probably let. Apple Spice handle it. Kenna, can. one, one, one question we were discussing earlier with, I was asking Pete his thoughts is, do you, is Apple Spice Junction, one of the things I guess I worry about is, is are they going to be able to serve it in a grab and go, like here's your bag with everything in it? Because there'd be a lot of prep that have to be done beforehand, likely to have all of those ready to go. Yeah, that was the, that was their plan is to have everything they would hand you know have everything ready to hand them, and they would just hand them a bag with all the food in it. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they're willing to put whatever dessert we get in as well. So. Any other thoughts from the committee? Now, I I will represent that I I I think we could find a safe way to do it. I I don't think it's Apple Spice can do it safely. We can't. I don't disagree about the, some of the food handling and things like that of permits. But anyways, um, the other things we'd have to just find potentially another. I mean, it's about a $1,750 swing in cost, which I'm not saying we don't do certain things because of the cost of it. But it's only any other any other thoughts from the committee? Yeah. Hey, this is Debbie saving the money. I was oh, gonna sorry. Say Who? That, um, this is Jay Teresa. I was just going to say, if we decide to not go with Apple Spice Junction, I think that we need to have a guaranteed committee of who's going to be doing it, not just who shows up that day to help serve. I think we need to have people that are planned ahead of time who's going to serve, and only those people should be handling and serving. And potentially, Jay Teresa, that gives us the opportunity to. Um... Make sure those people know exactly how we're going to do it, how they, what they need to bring, and be ready to go. Yes, this and then correct. I think that minimizes the COVID spreading if we just have those people and that's it, not just any of our committee showing up to do it. I see what you're saying. This is Kat. I think that as long as you have them wearing gloves and if it's still a big concern, a mask while they do it, I think it's fine and I think we could save the money. I personally have a food handler's permit and I'd be willing to totally help out if that's a concern. And this is Debbie, um, I'm happy to help. I also have a food handler's permit and we certainly could do it. Um, we probably need to make sure that the uh, county health is okay with that. I don't want them to shut us down if there's a problem.
Other thoughts? How many people do we need to, to, to serve, Stephen? Probably probably a thousand. No, people? Yes. Oh, 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 I was thinking people. Yeah, no, we don't need a thousand around the grill. You yeah, mean how many people? Few people around the grill? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, around the grill, probably four, four ish. I think are generally the ones around the grill. They're they're cooking the hot dogs, putting them into the kind of um, foil platter that then somebody is putting them in the in the bun and wrapping them in like in foil. What we what we would have done. We, this was what we were talking about before Apple Spice Junction option came on the table was during the days prior, probably on Tuesday, we were going to get people together and, and get all of the paper bags filled with chips, cookie, kind of all the condiments, the napkins, everything. So at the event, we're just putting the wrapped hot dog into the bag and then giving it out. I think that sounds good. Um, so you probably need a total of probably 10 people in total, like cooking hot dogs, putting them in the buns and wrapping them, giving, getting them in the bags, and then somebody handing them to the crowd as they, as they would pass through. Okay. Yeah, I think if we can just identify who those 10 people are ahead of time, that would be better or how many ever we can get over there. I think that would be best. So, Stephen, this is Kenna. Maybe what, me and Kat could maybe head that up. Okay. If Kat's willing. Yep, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Kenna, and Kenny, Kat. And you can count on my husband, Jim, to grill, and I'll, I'll do whatever. This is Debbie. Um, this Pete, is Jill. Been, I will uh, help with the bags. Who was that? Sorry. This is Jill. I will oh. help. We'll get the bags prepared. Perfect. Yeah, I think we can have on on probably that Tuesday. Anybody that wants to, and then staff can help. Yeah, get the bags prepared if we choose to go that way. So, Pete, were you going to say something? I thought I saw you. Uh, your little skeleton light up. Well, I was just going to say that Jill. Jill was volunteering. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, that's probably the chat. Um, so, Kenna, maybe what we do then, based on the feedback here, is we don't necessarily write off Apple Price Junction yet. You and you and Kat work on just kind of maybe what a safe plan would look like, and then if we feel like we can get to something that we're comfortable with, then we make the, decision, the final decision. That sounds good to me. Okay. Sounds good to me, too. Okay. And then, please... Question: Do you know if we have access to two grills? Uh, we we don't. It's okay. one pretty big grill, so I think we could okay. space four pe people pretty easily. Uh, okay. Um, but just the one. Okay. Unless Tim, you guys could build us another one. <laughs> the uh, the other so, part of it is kind of the activities. Oh, Tim. The, the, cemet yet? the cemetery has a nice coffin they use for a barbecue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it works great. <laughs> um, so then the the other part of it is the games that night. Kirsten had her, Kirsten volunteered to head up the kind of chalk the block activity for her families that want to come and decorate the sidewalk. And so Kirsten and maybe you have some people here tonight, but Kirsten is going to consider kind of whether we judge and prizes, you know, just things like that. Here's have you not you don't need to tonight, but have you given any additional thought to that yet? Um, I, I, you had just mentioned doing it, and that we need to decide like what parts of the sidewalk we could use. So that would de be determined by where are we having all the cars and where are we having yeah. you know all of those things. Usually the sidewalk last time, not usually last time. I know there were a lot of people in line on the sidewalk for the food, and so yeah. we to figure that piece out. And then we just need to probably put a, the cement blocks one and then X out two and mm. then one and then X out two. Yeah. 
and then just kind of determine how many spaces we can we can accommodate. So maybe then the next step, Kirsten, is we probably go meet over there sometime and look at it. Okay, that'd be great. I'll reach out and set up a time with you. Okay, that sounds good. Um, um, and then, oh, oh please, Jenna. Would this be a good time to talk about the gratitude garden? Is that part of this event? I can't remember. Well, it could be. Okay, uh, sure. Okay, so. Um, as you know, we've had an interfaith event tied to Summerfest on and on throughout the years. Um, and we had to cancel the National Day of Prayer because of our dear, our lovely pandemic. And we were thinking about doing what we call a day of Thanksgiving, but our committee is still concerned about getting people together in that, in that scenario. So they've come up with a new idea that they wanted me to pass by the Summerfest committee and they're calling it the gratitude garden. Um, there's a scripture in Philippians about when you're anxious, as we've all been with everything that's been going on, um, how gratitude and prayer can help you overcome that anxiousness. And so we were, had the idea of um, having a week of gratitude, which we would do the week of Summerfest. Um, we've approached the governor on um, potentially making it a week of gratitude. Um, and we're waiting to hear back from him, but um, we're putting together, we wanted to put together a video with, you know, well-known people in the community, community leaders, you know, local celebrities, things like that, why they're grateful and encourage the whole community, not just Orem, but all of Utah County um, to do things within gratitude um, that week. And as part of that, we were thinking about doing this gratitude garden, maybe that night at the barbecue where we just put a bunch of, you know, um, like real estate, you know, those little signs, like campaign signs um, somewhere in the park um, and just have quotes and scriptures and people's thoughts about gratitude um, that people can go and look at, that kind of thing. And then potentially um, as part of the chalk situation, maybe um, have the theme around gratitude where people could come and do chalk drawings around gratitude. So that was kind of our idea for that week. I don't know how anyone, everyone feels about that. I love the idea. This is Debbie, I love the idea. And Kenna, is that something that the interfaith would kind of take on? We would take that on, yeah. There wouldn't, it wouldn't be a summer fat. It would just be part of, you know, something else we could have that yeah. night at at there and then we could work with the maybe we could provide the prizes for the chalk drawing you know if we do that we we're thinking about hiring actually a, a chalk artist to do maybe some drawings that we could do as part of this um just some of the things we we're throwing around we haven't we just this idea just came up this past week so we've been kicking that idea around and how that would look but we just so that's kind of what we we're thinking about doing Kenneth, this is Kat. You might want to contact the Riverwoods because they always have their chalk um, art contest in their parking lot. And I don't think they're doing it this year, so they might have some contacts with some people that might want to do that. Well, that's a great idea. So I, if, if that's okay, I can work with Kirsten and we can work that out. Is that okay with everyone? I, I'm great with that. Sounds great to Sounds me. Great. Okay, thank you. And then I think, uh, Jay Teresa, I think that wraps up the uh, car show and barbecue. Peter, Pete's working on kind of the scavenger hunt, find Miro's, um, and, and we're working on kind of finding electric, kind of electric trains that we can disinfect um, throughout the night. So we're working on all that. Okay, thank you. Then the next one is the Friday night pool party, which um, Whitaker, um, I'm sorry, I'm spacing, I'm spacing uh, her name, her name. Kathy. Yeah, Kathy, of course. Yeah, Kathy's planning, she's not here. We've, we've, worked, we've got the dilly bars figured out. We've actually started posting and selling, uh, selling tickets to the pool party that night because as things are currently, we'll have a capacity limitation of 400 people. So, but everything's everything's underway at the pool party. We're good there. 
Okay, great. Thank you. And then can you see the screen yet, Jay Teresa, or do you want me to go through and the next day? Um, yeah, it would be fine to go through the next day because I'm on my phone. So. Oh, okay. No problem. Um, Liz, the next one's Kids Parade. Okay. So um, since our last meeting, we've talked, um, we've got some changes with that. So um, first off, um, the parade will be from 6 to 6.30. Um, Geezer Fest will pause so that we can actually have um, an announcer there on the stage. Um, I want to ask Kenton Nielsen, who in the past has been the um, main announcer for the parade. Um, I'm on, I want to ask him to do it. And then um, in addition to asking him to kind of ad lib the kids as they walk around, you know, oh, and over there on, you know, in the purple shirt or whatever, you know, in addition to ad libbing the kids, I also... Um, was thinking it might be kind of nice to um, have give him like a list of just a few things to talk about um, with the parade. Are we still having a grand marshal for Summerfest this year? Mm. Is, is it still going to be the governor or? No, he's yeah, he's he's not accepting invitations like that right now. Okay, so that won't exist, but he could like still announce the student marshals and the Spirit of Warm winners. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to maybe ask him to announce some of the main sponsors or, uh, you know, because they're not going to be recognized in the parade like they normally would. Mm -hmm. um, and they will be in, of course, like whatever Pete puts together to send out the newsletter or whatever. But I'm not sure if we want to ask him to announce those during the 30 minute parade. Um, in addition, I didn't I wanted to hear you guys' thoughts on um, whether or not to ask him to recognize first responders, hospital workers essential workers. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on having him announce those types of things? Well, I think those actually could be maybe the grand marshal of the parade. Oh, the, the essential workers? Yes. Uh -huh. I think that's a great idea that's to great, have yeah. him announce that. Um, and then and what sure about the... Our sponsors would love to be announced, I'm sure. Okay, that was what I was going to ask. Okay, so um, so then, Kenna, should I just use that list that you have put together with all of those sponsors on it? Yeah, I'll just get them all to you. I mean, okay. I'll just make sure for you. Okay, perfect. Um, and then, so the parade, like I said, it's changed quite a bit. So it's going to be just a children's parade. Um, and it's going to start and end at the pavilion that is on the south side of the city center park. Um, oh, thanks for pulling up that map. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So it's the one that's like um, right across from Trio, that pavilion. And then it's going to just be a walking only parade, no bikes or anything, as the kids just walk that walking path that goes around the park. It does get a little dicey. Um, behind the stage and around the altogether playground. Well, it's kind of goes, cause it kind of, it's just kind of right there behind the stage. It gets a little bit dicey uh, as to where they're supposed to go. So we'll probably just need to make sure we have, uh, probably my husband <laughs> standing there saying, turn here, turn here. So that the, then we can just have, you know, whoever is at the park can just stand around the edges and cheer for the kids uh, as they walk past the, the stage. Uh, and we can decide if we want to have the, on the, beginning of the stage or the end of the stage um, when Kenton kind of announces, you know, ad-libbing the kids. Um, and then, okay, there's one other, um, let's see. Oh, and then uh, uh, Steven, we're still on for having um, the parade get kicked off with a golf cart with the police, right? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so then now Steven had an idea that we want to discuss with the committee. Um, and that is, to have the kids um, make t-shirts for themselves or signs for themselves or something like that, where they are honoring um, someone who has been essential to them during uh, this pandemic. Maybe a parent, uh, you know, a family member, maybe a teacher, um, a grocery store worker, something like that. Um, so we wanted to kind of see what your guys' thoughts were on um, having that be part of the parade. Debbie, I like it. I like it. So as you're thinking, I have a concern about that. Um, I, so 
so my concern um, is that it might end up seeing something gets taken over by um, the political uh, protesting uh, rhetoric that seems to be going on right now. And who knows by August how much things will change, but I don't necessarily think that a children's parade is the right uh, venue for making a political statement. And I'm concerned that it could become that. This is Kat. I also have another concern. If we're going to have the kids on their bikes or scooters or things like that, with them trying to hold signs too, that might be a concern because they might be running into each other trying to hold on to their signs. Uh, so we have talked about that and it's going to be a walking only. If they bring their bikes or scooters, we'll just have them park at the pavilion um, because kids go different speeds and it's only like what a three foot four, maybe four, not, I don't even think it's four feet wide. Um, kids will be passing each other and it just won't be safe. So for safety, we're just going to have it be walking only. Um, I don't necessarily mind if um, kids are pulling a wagon or pushing a stroller with younger siblings, but no bikes or scooters. So does anyone have any thoughts um, for or against um, doing the um, t-shirts so we could, because it would basically be like announced on social media and in the newsletter that Pete's going to be sending out um, and want to know what your guys' thoughts are on whether we should go down that path or whether we shouldn't. So are you saying with the t-shirts that, sorry for the heavy breathing guys, I'm walking. Um, with the t-shirts, are you saying they can put whatever they want on there? Yeah, so um, so I've been involved in like um, with uh, JDRF in the past, and so kind of what I picture in my head, and I, I maybe I should just let Stephen describe this since this was a good idea, his idea. But I I kind of picture uh, like kids just making like just taking a T-shirt and and decorating it, saying you know love my mom or uh, Mrs. Jones is the best or something like that. But Stephen, maybe you should say a little bit what you were thinking. Yeah, I think yeah. The thought, what we had discussed before was like having signs to honor maybe certain businesses or organizations that were essential. And then um, I guess part of the conversation came out of uh, you know the fear of um, the fear of you know somebody's going to be missed out, and and essentially we're not going to consider what like um, um, what Liz said that what what we're thinking is essential may not have been what's essential to somebody else somebody else the essential may have been you know their grandmother that was able to watch the kids uh you know while mom and dad had to continue to work so we thought if we take deciding who is essential out of our hands and put it in the hands of the parade participants then those you know for example my son and daughter may may walk in miss litster and miss sue you know for miss litster and miss sue who are their teachers who kind of got them through this is this this critical time and so it was really giving the the power to the people the walking to decide who it is that they that they want to honor and walk in the name of and just kind of trying to add that meaning uh to the the parade having said that what i when i when we talked about it, i hadn't thought through some of liz's concerns and so that's where i guess the decision point comes in is there is like there is there is a chance that somebody may want to may take their shirt or their sign and and want to do something um, political with it, uh, so it's yeah. That, that's kind of what we're what we're weighing, and interested in your thoughts for sure. Hey, so I think I, that I think that if you decide to leave it that way, you're going to have to take the chance that those political statements might be made because maybe to somebody, you know, what's going on in the black community, they might pick somebody from that community who's been fighting the good fight or who has died yep. from it. So you will take the chance of that if you leave it to them, which I think is fine. But if you're trying to avoid that or people maybe having, being angry about it, then you might want to not give them that liberty. See, and that's it right there, Jay Teresa. It's the angry that I'm so concerned about. Like if we're just, if we're just honoring and recognizing people, then I think that's fabulous. 
Um, and you know, and I really, I feel like that could be such a beautiful thing, but I'm so concerned about the angry that could come from it. And, you know, with Summerfest already being delayed and having all these modifications, um, I am concerned, but the more, as I'm hearing Steven describe it, the more I'm thinking, you know, if we're just saying honor who you want and you honor who you want and everyone's just going to show up it seems like something that could be really great. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of changing my opinion a little bit and thinking maybe we should do it. Hey, I just, I had a couple of questions. So is the city providing the t-shirts for each child? Um, you know, we could potentially like ask for donations of t-shirts from like NPS or something. But uh, honestly, I was just thinking we just kind of put it in our, in our announcement. You know, if you want to make a sign or a t-shirt to honor some someone who's been essential in your life then do that and just let them use their own shirt okay i i just wondered if they were if that was something they were to do in their own or if maybe that was their little prize to walk in the parade and you could have something that was um already made for them that said something really nice and grateful on it or something that they could, I am grateful for, and then let them write a few names on, but have them all be the same, except for who they are. That would be really honoring. cool. Um, a couple concerns I have with that. I mean, we could easily use that that South Pavilion to have them do it. Um, I think that could be really neat. But um, I don't know if we know how many to expect. So we'd have to... I guess try and gauge how many kids would show up and then you always run into the sizes problem um, and how many sizes to have. Um, and so I'm concerned. What if we run out of shirts? What if some kid shows up at the last minute and doesn't have a shirt or what if they all show up at the same time and we don't have enough shirts for them? Then there's a the social distancing problem. If they're all crowded around those tables to use the Sharpie to write on their fill in the name on their shirts, I feel like that could be an issue too. Um, we could potentially, if we can get shirts donated, um, we could potentially um, have them like to be picked up before Summerfest and then brought to it, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, this is Kat. I think to make it easier, I'd say, you know, people are creative. I'd say let them use their own shirts and decorate them the way they want if we're going to go that route. And then we don't have to worry about finding shirts. We don't have to worry about the problems of getting them out, running out of sizes, et cetera, et cetera. Well, okay, I'm so it's sounding with, like I'm more and more. I'm fine with leaving it up to whoever. <laughs> so it sounds like more people are saying, yes, this is a, a good idea to invite the kids to honor someone um, while they walk the parade path. I still, I still have a concern. I'm not. I don't necessarily feel safe with people being able to choose that in the climate we're in. So Jay Teresa, are you afraid that they will be like, because there'll be people who'll be angry if a child chooses to honor someone in the black community, or are you just concerned it'll become, you know, uh, like a uh, protest type situation or what is your concern? Yes. That okay. is my concern that, <laughs> See, that was my concern, for, too. For choosing a person in the black community, they could choose someone uh, that has, uh, that has white supremacist. They could choose anything like that. And I just worry about the uncomfortability of some people, the emotion that that might bring for some people. And I'm not saying that these are children, so it may not happen, but it's, it's a concern. Well, and if they are doing it with their parents... Parents oh, yeah. are going to, you know, have their influence, you know, over that uh, type of thing. See, and I, I agree. I, I feel really torn on it because it seems like such a great thing, but there is that worry. Okay, so it's not a mandatory, it's not a mandatory thing for them to do to walk in the parade, yeah. right? Right. It, yeah. it would just be. Well, then I think the ones that do that might be the ones that, um might stand out <laughs> but that also can create anger because you told them that they could choose whoever and now you're telling them they can't walk in the parade 
Right. And I would definitely not want to do that. I feel like that would be the wrong message that the city would be sending. Uh, I think Orem is a city of inclusion and especially with the theme this year being you belong here. I feel like that would be the opposite message that would be sent uh, to tell someone you can't wear that. Um, I liked uh, what I think was Kirsten was saying about, or maybe it was Shelly that was saying uh, pre-made shirts and just having them fill in. We like that it said, you know, I am grateful for uh, the essential people in my life and then had like a blank. Um, but I'm not sure about getting, giving out the shirts. Like uh, Kat was saying, people could make their, I don't, you know, I don't know guys. <laughs> oh, what, what's the age group? What's the, what's the high, what's the ages? Um, you know, I haven't given that any thought. I, I just was thinking children as anyone under 18. So, um, I think probably teenagers aren't going to be that interested. Um, like I, I've got two new teenagers here at home. I don't think either of them would even consider it at all. So probably you know it's be elementary kids and younger. I, yeah, I think I would put that on there though, because it's the older ones that it would cause the problem. Well, I think what Jace Teresa is saying is it's not necessarily going to be the children that'll cause the problem. Um, the parents, right. Saying, yeah, it's, it'll be the parents. Right, but if it was an older kid, you, it might. <laughs> right, but it's not always going to be the kid who's going to uh, decorate the shirt, right? It's going to be the parent who's going right. to help out right. with decorating the shirts. I say let kids just be lit kids and wear what they want. <laughs> So maybe we don't say anything at all about honoring people and we just do Let's, kids only? What if you had people just dress, dress up like their favorite superhero or who okay. their hero is? Okay, dress up like a hero? Yeah. That's yeah, we can't say dress up like a hero because you run into the same problem. Or yeah. superhero. <laughs> you can say superhero from a comic book or something like that. But hero, you, you know what? The same problem. Yeah, you're right. You would. Well, I'm just glad I don't have to figure that one out. <laughs> Mom, Shelly, <laughs> we need your input. <laughs> well, like I said, let kids be kids and just have fun walking in the parade. Uh, and I, you know, I agree with that, but nowadays kids being kids could end up being something political so if we're going to have them writing stuff or dressing up as something we need to be careful with that but if they just want to walk in the parade without the dress up and without who your hero is that that's great that's what I, that's kind of what i'm thinking if they want to yeah um this is kind of the other thing we could do instead of t-shirts is you could just have um some poster, not poster board, but cardstock in different colors with, you know, printed that just says, I'm thankful for, I'm grateful for this, and then have them write it in and hold their signs as they're walking. Kind of like uh, the I really, t-shirt I idea. really like that idea. Um, then we run into the social distancing problem of where they would do okay. it. Well, um, then you could have the, uh, maybe we could put it on social media. People could download it and bring it with them. Okay. Um, just an idea. And it could be, it could say that phrase, like I, I'm thankful for, uh, you know, the essential people in my life and then, and then have that maybe. It, it would be a chance for us to put like the, obviously put design something, have the Summerfest logo, have our theme. This is where you belong. And uh -huh. then you would get to kind of uh, brand that, that uh, poster that they could download. Yeah. You know, and it would add it to the, the gratitude thing. Yeah. Yeah, maybe message that. I mean, the truth is, if any if anybody's walking, I mean, even if we say don't dress up or don't recognize somebody, if somebody wants to walk with a shirt and protest, they can do that anyway. I mean, we we wouldn't be able to stop it just because we're not encouraging it. Right. So. But I feel like maybe having a sign that um, has this already on it is hopefully gonna be like a fill in the blank, maybe cause a little less um, of that thinking outside the box. I don't know. I hate to want to limit people's creativity, but I almost feel like that might be a good idea at this political season. It would at least give them a spark their ideas to what, um, what they might, you know, 
kind of yeah. help them think that way. Yeah. Well, you can always hope. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Jay, Teresa, I really want to hear what your feedback is. Obviously, as you being part of the Black community, how? what are your thoughts? Um, you just mean as far as, like, having the I am grateful? Yeah, like having a sign that's, uh, so probably have the um, you belong here theme, the Orem Summer Fest logo, uh, and then something along the lines of like, I'm grateful for the essential people in my life, and then like a, a blank, so they can write who it is. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's okay. I might want to keep it at I'm grateful for, maybe not the okay. essential people. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, I, I, just, I like that better too. Yeah, I just, you know, and I know that that can still be something that people can find a way to be political about, but I think that's a little bit safer, especially I think more so the parents would let the children decide who they're grateful for. Um, you know, my dad, my mom, my grandfather, whoever it might be. I think that's more something the children would be able to make a decision and the parents wouldn't intervene so much. Okay. Well, and leaving it like that too. I mean, they could be grateful for Legos, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> okay. I like that. Yeah. I like that better too. Okay. Thanks for your feedback, everyone. I only had one other question and it's for Debbie. Uh, are you still on the call, Debbie? Oh, I think she is. I think that's her number there. Um, that, that's you, right, Debbie? Yeah. Okay. So um, for the, if we we're having the regular parade, then the mayor and the city council would be part of that parade. Do you know uh, if the mayor and city council would want to walk at the beginning of the parade uh, right behind the police golf cart and kind of lead the I'm kids? Sure would. I'm sure they would. Okay. Okay. But so I can ask for sure, but I think they would. Okay. Um, so we'll plan then uh, on that unless you come back and say that, nope, they are interested. We'll plan on that. And then um, maybe we'll just have, um, I think when it ends, it just, I, do we want to have anything finale? Maybe ask the golf cart to go around a second time as the finale or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's quite the finale. <laughs> yeah. I think Geezer Fest will probably be ready to go as soon as we're done. So we may not want to. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so Liz. Yes. I have a question about your police golf cart. Yeah. How many police will be on that golf cart? Uh, I don't know. It it would probably be one. I mean, just just an officer, maybe two. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be much. And in fact, it might be even the police golf cart, but with maybe even a mayor and council member being the ones driving it. I don't know. We haven't really. Talk through that. Okay, so I my I would recommend just because of our climate that we're in right now that a police officer not be so low. Okay. Oh, I see. So I don't need a whole bunch of police officers, but I don't think a police officer should be by themselves as well. So if there's one, at least two of them need to be there with each other. What Thank if you. they need bodyguards? Yeah, Liz, what if we had like a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, a Smith worker, somebody like that with the police officer, all essential workers? Uh, you know, I did think about that, but, um, you know, trying to think about it from my perspective, I feel like just the walking path around the park might be a little awkward to ask an adult to walk in this children's parade. Uh, I think the mayor and city council are a little different because it's the city of Orem, but I feel like one doctor or one nurse or even two or three, uh, I feel like maybe we're getting, I I, just, I feel like if I was, if I was that teacher that was asked, I would feel really awkward walking, you know, at the beginning of this parade or, or anywhere along the parade since be, because of the fact that it's just on the walking path, it's just a sidewalk with. Um, so I kind of feel like maybe we should just keep it to the city council, the mayor, and the kids, and that's it. Uh, I really like Stephen's suggestion that maybe having the mayor even drive the police golf car. I assume it has sirens, right? Because if it doesn't have sirens, it's kind of pointless. Do you know, Stephen, if it does? Um, yeah, I th I think it does. It's definitely be marked. I mean, it definitely has the warrant police, but I'll, I can confirm that with Shane. Because I think that's the whole point of the – the police at the beginning of the parade yeah. is to make a big, loud announcement. Parade starting. We're coming, you know? Yeah. 
I'll, I will find that out. Okay, thanks. If not, get one of those bullhorns that has the siren on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would work. Oh, you know, actually, I just remembered one other thing. Sorry, I um, I know I've been talking for a long time. Um, I Because we're only going to be on the width of the sidewalk path, I know that none of the current banners will work because they'd be too wide. Um, do we want to consider, uh, I mean, we have it in the budget already to make some new banners uh, that are smaller that could be held um, maybe right behind the police golf cart uh, or even right behind the mayor and city council's kicking off the parade with a banner? I'm not worried about the banners. This is Debbie. Maybe just the children's parade banner is all you need, a small one. I just make okay. one if you done. Okay. This yeah, I don't think we need anything like that. Those posters. I don't think we need to have anything with banners. So you don't think we even need like a small one that says 2020 Summerfest Children's Parade? I think we'd be okay, but that's just me. Anyone else care to weigh in? I don't really, I don't really have an opinion on that one. I think <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it would look that's nice. A lot of money. Just then, it would look you nice, know. But I think it's not necessary. Well, I think having an announcer too will, um, I mean, it's it's just the park that I, I, I believe the speaker can be heard uh, pretty far and wide across there. So I think if he just announces it, I, I think, I think a banner might not be necessary. This is Kirsten. I'm going to say, go with the banner. I think you vote yes. Yeah. I, I think if you don't make it feel special, if you don't, you know, it's those little things when they you put them all together that makes it feel like something. And do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, if it's not that much money. Yeah, we could probably get a banner for like 40 bucks. Oh yeah, um, that's totally worth it then. Blind guy, I mean, he made me a huge, he's made me several huge banners for 80 bucks. So something that little, I'm sure it'd be like under 40. Okay. Can you do balloons for the kids to carry with them? Well, that, that's kind of a lot, a lot of stuff for them to carry. <laughs> oh, just a poster and a balloon? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess since we have the budget for of more than $40 for um, posters, we could probably, or I mean banners, and we're not going to need that. We could buy balloons and helium. Well, we have we were planning to get balloons and helium anyways. That may just be when we hand them out if okay. we want. That would be fun. They would like them, and it would add a little color and fun to the parade, and a little bit more special. Yes, yes. And we can promote the census with the census balloons I have. Just kidding. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. Okay. I mean, you tie it on the kid. Okay, so I think I'm I'm I think I'm done. Was anyone okay. anything else? Um, Jay Teresa, the next thing's fireworks. We're good there, and then the next one is food trucks. Okay, um, so as far as food trucks go, I we've been getting in applications. Um, the last time I looked, which was like a week ago. Um, we only had one person from Orem, but I haven't looked in a while, but we're getting, we've been getting, I've been steadily seeing the applications coming in. So once it closes at the end of this month, I'll go ahead and look over and review. And then, um, I will send who I've chosen to Pete and Tim so that Tim can weigh in on different vendors he's worked with. And just to get a second, a second and third opinion on the vendors chosen, on the trucks chosen. Uh, Jay, Teresa, we also just got the list of Orem, what they call mobile food licenses. And so we can, we'll send out to those people too. So these are the food trucks and food trailers and 
other businesses that are registered to do business in Orem and that their headquarters are in Orem. Um, and then we'll invite them to uh, apply as well. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. And Pete, what, what is the day the application closes? Uh, I think we said j June 30th. Okay. Yeah, and so I already got, we Stephen and I had talked about Kona um, being there for Geezer Fest, and so they've already sent through their application, so I've taken that one and set it to the side for them. Excellent. And that, that's all I have for food trucks. Okay, next one is Kids Crafts. I did have a conversation with Sally. Uh, Jill was kind enough to send an email out. For Kids Crafts, she's just kind of created a grab and go, and there's no a big event for them to stay and do it. It's a craft that they could do on their own at the park. They could take home however, however they want to do that. Um, and then the next one is Kiwanis Breakfast. So I talked to um, them and hang on, let me just pull up my notes really quick. So I talked to Dean and he said that they are kind of concerned about where the status is going to be at that point in time and how buffets are not allowed to be open right now and all of their other concerns. And so he said that they are going to hold off on this year and just go ahead and plan on next year. I will make that uh, change. Thanks for that update, Kat. Um, so then the next one is scales and tails and kind of kids' activities. So Sally brought up a good point that's probably just something we consider as far as a general principle. That is, so scales and tails we can do. Um, they're pretty flexible when the time would be, and they would try to help with social distancing. Uh, they would wear masks, things like that. But one of the things that Sally brought up that's just an interesting thought is if any of these activities are going to have so many, you know, so many restrictions, uh, you know, like maybe the kind of the conversation with the parade is this idea of wearing masks, the idea of social distancing is a very – People have a lot of strong opinions on both sides of that. Um, we've probably all seen that. And her her thought was, if we're gonna, if any of the activities would have to have so many restrictions that it's going to cause fighting, then we may just not be best to not do that this year. So, so for example, with scales and tails, if if the social distance requirement the lines to come up and see the animals, potentially masks. If we were going to have so many restrictions in place that it's going to cause parents to get, get upset because of those restrictions that then, uh, you know, the only reason we're, they're arguing is because we're trying to do a good thing, but perhaps we would um, be best to not do that. And I'm speaking of scales and tails. It applies to the other things. The uh, Paul Mitchell, they're they're ready and willing to do the hair updos. Now that one they feel comfortable in because the lines aren't that long. The hairstylist would wear a mask and the individual's back would be to them. So they wouldn't really be in anybody's face. Uh, the balloon animal person is available if we wanted to, but we would have to try to limit how many people are at them at once and whether that's here's your assigned time, come during your assigned time, or the line is six feet spaced, but then that line could get very long. I think that's kind of where she's coming from is, are there any of these activities that would have so many restrictions that it's only going to be, it's only going to cause more, more hard feelings than good feelings. So, I mean, it's just kind of a more of a general thought, but the ones she has that are available and willing are scales and tails, the balloon artists, and the uh, hair stylist. Is this is the city going to take a lot of guff for a lot of this? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure I'm sure there will be some just because we did the big event, uh, but um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think we're willing to we're willing to take some, and honestly, 
Even two months, things got so bad that that the governor changes any direction, we would we would move that same direction. But um, I don't, you know, I I think there's some things we were willing to kind of fall on the sword for, and that is fireworks, um, kind of the music, the food trucks, some of those big ones. I think her thought is, hey, a little thing like a balloon artist, we could do with or without, and if that if that is just going to cause more fighting because people can't congregate around them or we are assigning times then maybe we just wouldn't do it this year and be ready to um be ready to go um in in the future so that's i think that's kind of i think more people would be understanding to not have those things yeah um then you might get more guff for having them especially with kids involved yeah I feel like Scales and Tails could be just a stage performance only. I don't see any need to get up close to the animals. Um, and I feel like it would still be entertaining and be, keep people engaged. Um, I love the idea of assigning a time for the hair and the balloon, but I am not sure that I that many people would show up only during their assigned time. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, I mean, Liz, you, you said it really well. I think that's her concern is, and then somebody, then somebody would say, well, I'm already here. Just let me have one. And then, and then we're just entering into kind of unnecessary conflict where if there was no balloon artist, then there was no conflict. Yeah, this is Debbie. I feel like the balloon and the uh, hair thing is something we can postpone. I like the idea of the scales and tails on the stage, kind of showing the animals, but not having up close touching. Not not okay. this year. I I think it I think we have to be we have to err a little bit on the side of being precautious, but still realizing that we've thought through a lot of these things and, and then you can take the flack if you're willing to realize that we've thought through some of this stuff. So and you can always send unhappy people to me. <laughs> what if um the balloon artist uh, or the balloon animal maker um, was kind of put on the stage like a performer. Um, what if they had already pre-made, you know, X number of balloons and then stood on the stage making more as uh, kids came up um, and just picked from what was already there? Um, a lot of the times the reason the balloon line gets so long is because it takes a while to make each individual creation. But if your choice is, you know, this, this, or this, then you just choose and go. Mm. It, I'm afraid we won't have enough and people will be mad and they won't get what they want. I mean, you, you'd be amazed at, well, maybe you wouldn't, but be amazed at how terrible the parents can be in these situations. What if you just had one, one thing, one kind of cool thing and he makes, he makes a bunch of them before the event and they're just there to hand out and they're gone when they're gone. Potentially. I mean, we're already giving out balloons. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Crap. I don't think, and like with the face painter, she doesn't even want to come. So. Yeah. I did forget about the fact that we are giving out helium balloons already. Right. So. So what if we did? What if we just said, "We're well, let's work and figure out the scales and tails, but let's forego the other ones this year." Um, I guess that's I agree. Okay. That sounds okay. good. No, sounds these are best be on the stage on Saturday. Uh, yeah, we would have to find a, another stage or inside the rec center for scales and tails. But yeah, the skeezer fest, other than the parade, does have the stage programmed the entire time. But we can um, we can do scales and tails potentially just in the gym area of the rec center, and we can space that on the floor. Or, or figure something else out. We can look at that. In your center? What do you mean rec center? Our rec center is under construction. Oh, sorry, the rec center is currently the senior center, but I mean, yeah, I mean the senior center. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, I, I was working on that one myself. I was confused. Okay, so senior center. That Okay, there's a stage there. That'll work. Yep. Okay. Um... That is all for Saturday. That's all. That's the events for the week.
I like it. Is there anything last minute that anybody wants to bring up about their event? No? Okay, well, just keep communication through email if something comes up or you need an opinion about something. Um, Jill asked if our if we received our mass event, uh, I guess, cert certificate from the county yet. So, no, I'm meeting with Heath tomorrow. The county's actually making changes to the mass gathering event for any crowd bigger than 50 people. Uh, the, it, you, you're allowed at an outdoor event to have up to 6,000 people. So it won't be limited by 50. We just have to work through some different requirements to make sure there's appropriate opportunities. To but I'm meeting with Heath tomorrow morning to talk through that. Okay, thank you, Stephen. How about some Summerfest masks? Um, Geezer Fest is actually bringing the masks with them to the uh, to the event. I'm thinking some really cool Orem Summerfest masks. Can you get any of those made cheap? Um, I think the going rate probably. Uh, you know, I don't know for sure. I'd probably, I mean, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be cheap. It could be nice. All though. right. Well, Kirsten, showing, Kirsten, maybe if you could just turn what you're sewing into a mask, summer fan mask. There you go. I'm sure Kenna has extra t-shirts we can use. We can use those t-shirts cut up into masks, you know, make sure the Summerfest yeah. logo is showing. There you have it. Yeah. <laughs> So I think, um, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Well, we only have one scheduled meeting between now and the event, though. So anything you need or thoughts that come up between now and next meeting, just reach out to Jay Teresa, reach out to Pete, reach out to myself, and we'll um, we'll work through. Jill, Jill, remind us one more thing. We're working on polo shirts for everybody. We'll be getting that taken care of here pretty soon. Um, Kenna, I think we have a, quite a few volunteer T-shirts from last year left over. But I'm also just trying to picture if – is anybody picturing a need for a lot of volunteers for their event? I know that Sally had mentioned she wanted a couple. Okay. I don't know. Do you want judges to have them? No, I don't think we've had judges in the past. Okay. These are, like, um, really bright now – Jay Teresa, I wonder with those couple volunteers could potentially just be addressed with just our commit our committee and staff that'll be there anyways. Yeah, probably, but because we might be changing scales and tails to the stage inside the senior center, they that might be a moot point. Yeah. Well we we'll work with Sally and make and make sure. But if, if anybody here, I guess if you if you have any thoughts on any volunteer t shirts or needs. Let us know so we can make sure to get to get you what you need. We'll get an inventory of how many pieces we have left over, but I think we can figure that out between now and next month. Well, and I think we can use the royalty for volunteers, so I think That's we true have too. an extra amount of people to help with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. See you next Thank time. You. Bye. Bye. See ya.